Welcome to Media Guild's International's Vegas Voice Actors on Camera, available via the Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Corporation. My name is Rick Beinhammer. I'm your host for this evening's show. And the first script will be A Robot in a House, written by Betty Lou Garris, with Isaac, Teresa, Dana, and Alan. So let's go see that. Welcome to the Tokyo Robotics Fair. Our newest robotic model looks, feels, and talks like a real woman. But it is a replica of the beautiful Japanese film star Sayonoto Hichigara. Her name is Robata. Wow, Lee, she's amazing. Robata, say hello to the nice man and his wife. Mushi, mushi. Bonjour. Bonjourno. Good morning. Hello. Her vocabulary is 20,000 words and phrases in five different languages. Why, Sydney? That's about 19,000 more than you have. <laughs> yeah, but really? Okay, talk to us, Robata. I am Robata. Robot 2791. I queen, cook, sew, and take care of garden. Can you cook a cherry pie? Fast as you blink eye. Oh, yeah? What else? Robot to repair car, create art, and give great massage. Today only $3,000. Tomorrow the price goes up to $10,000. You got a deal. Meredith, you now own the robot. Yay. Thank you, buddy. Sydney, robot just cleaned the entire house and lunch is on the table. Yeah, and she changed it all in the car and repaired the broken window. She's a great investment, honey. Mr. Sydney, like massage now? Hmm, yes. Ooh, my God, that is great. So relaxing. Hmm, maybe mm. too relaxing. <laughs> Robata, time to do the laundry. Laundry? No, no, Robata, do no laundry. I give Mr. Sidney massage now. What? I said do the laundry. Mr. Sidney, Robata, bring your slippers, double martini. A massage feet. I'm in heaven. Robata, go to your space. It's time for us to go to sleep. No, Miss Meredith, go to space. Robata, sleep with Mr. Sidney. What did you say? Hey, you're the robot. I'm the wife. Go to space, Miss Meredith. You go to your space. Hey, hey, leave me alone. Miss ah! <laughs> Meredith. Miss Meredith, repair door. Be fast. Hmm. Yes, right away. I'll get the tools. Oh, Robata, come and see my work. Yes, I look. Oh, ah, oh, it, get it, ah, do it, ah, hey, get out of my lap, you stupid bird, 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 ah, Hi, hon. Where's Robata? Oh, let's just say she broke down. What about my massage? Well, that's just fine, honey. I'll give you the massage. How's this? Ooh, that's great, sweetheart. Hmm. Yeah. The shoulder. The oh, hair. yes. Hmm? That's the spot. I thought so. Hmm. All right, now we have some improvisation with Alan and Susan. <laughs> All right, there we go. Hello, Mr. Cheetah. I'm the orange giant monkey. <laughs> what? I said I'm the orange monkey. What? Why will you take your headphones off? Because I'm jamming. Oh, well, you can You jam should listen to the music. Okay, well, I'll jam too. Here. You knocked my head off. It's all right. The music no, is all No, my brains will fall out. <laughs> life's been, ever since Siegfried and Roy closed, life's been kind of slow on. and <laughs> says not been all that great for me, so it's all I've been doing now. So please, if you need a tiger or a leopard or a monkey, call now. <laughs> okay, you can take the headphones off. What'd you want now? What did you say? Nothing. <laughs> You said want somebody to call you now? Who's gonna call you? Don't worry about it. What's going on, monkey? <laughs> what did they need cheetahs for? 
I don't know. After the show closed, I have no idea anymore. And now all these animal rights activists are making my job a whole lot harder. Oh, don't you hate that? Yes, I do. They think they're protecting our rights, but they're really just disrupting our shows. If I'm going to live in this town, I need money. Money. Dollars. I need cash. I haven't made it rain since it last rained in Vegas. Well, and that no. was probably too long ago. Well, nobody's going to pay you for listening to your headphones and, and jam into the music. The headphones were for you, my little <laughs> monkey. Oh, they were, but they were on your head no. to start with. That was the whole ruse, and you <laughs> fell for it. What kind of ruse is that? I don't know. I'm just a dumb animal. That's all. I don't know anything. You sure are a dumb animal. That's right. <laughs> so what are we going to do now? Wait for a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Operators are standing by. You know, I always thought that the Cheetah was a completely different show than that, but all right. Well, now, next we'll have uh, another sketch with uh, Susan, Dana, and Isaac. This sketch is called Soccer Mom Shopper by Betty Lou Garris. Meet Denny. She is a TV watcher shopaholic. I have an hour of free time. <gasps> ah, the shopping channel. This miracle pan will not stick, flake, burn, crush, or peel, no matter what you do to it. You can drill it, rub nails into it, drown it, or set it on fire. It's a miracle pan. Today, only $19.99. Miracle Fry. Call 1-800-555-5555. But wait. Call in the next 60 seconds and we'll give you two miracle fry pans for the low price of $19.99. Oh, I love it. I must have it. Later that night, during Denny's bout of insomnia. Ooh, a walk-in sitting jacuzzi. Folks, if you suffer from aches and pains, back trouble, insomnia, gastrointestinal disturbance, bloating, gas, or lack of sexual interest, our sit and soak jacuzzi is an almost instant cure. On sale today, only for $2,500. Installation not included. Call 1-800-555-5555. But wait! You will also receive a free bar of our sand soap, guaranteed to remove any trace of dirt or skin. Denny once again fell under the st spell of Frank, the super TV sales pitchman. I do have aches and pains. Insomnia, bloating, dirt. I gotta have it. The next day, Denny received a phone call. Is this Denny? Yes, it is. This is Leslie Jaws from the Riverbank. You owe us a little money. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, how much do I owe? Let's see. You owe $89,427.89. Will that be cash, check, or credit card? Oh, and if you don't pay the River Bank by tomorrow, we will dump you, your kids, parents, and house into the river next to our bank. Oh, yes. And you'll not pass go, but you will go straight to jail for 100 years. <gasps> Oh dear. Needless to say, although Denny's $89,427.89 followed her for the rest of her life, she and her family were not thrown into the river. She did not go to jail, and she did not watch another TV pitchman or infomercial again. And that's the honest truth. That's right. Operators are standing by. She might even get that cheetah. Maybe. Yeah, by a cheetah and a monkey. But let's move on. Uh, we now have member spotlight with mm -hmm. Teresa Graham Hello. as our spotlighted member. Yes. And uh, tell us, uh, Teresa, what have you been up to lately? Oh, gosh. I have just been really stirring the pot lately. I think maybe getting in a little over my head. I'm oh. not quite sure. <laughs> Is this with being a co-president? Well, yeah, that's part of it with Media Guilds International. I've been involved since the summer of 2014, and it's really been a wonderful, wonderful experience. I've gotten to do everything from help be the treasurer with the books, and now I'm actually co-president. I'm not sure how that happened, though. I think I was roped and tied or something. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Oh, we'll make it another time. Um, so, uh, 
So how did you get started? Well, you know, I if we go way, way back, I'm not going to tell you how many years back, but I had originally gotten into radio and TV back when I lived in San Diego. And I, I wanted to be a weather woman. And, and actually, you know, point out things and talk about the weather, kind of fit my science background. And I went to um, a university and worked at the radio station there and started getting my feet wet. And then lo and behold, life came along. Met a guy. It's always about a guy. <laughs> always the guys. I know. It's always the guys. <laughs> ended up here in Las Vegas, right. ended up going to school to become a teacher oh, yeah. and um, had a couple kids. And then I decided, you know, I still wanted to get back to TV and acting and radio and that sort of thing. And then I realized I was getting older. And I'd look uh, in the mirror and go, ah! Well, that's when I decided voice work. That maybe what I right. needed to do was be behind the scenes. Um, I did know how to operate cameras, how to do some editing, that kind of stuff. But I thought, you know, voice. I kind of got down that Midwestern voice sound, tried to make it sound very... Um, announcerish and you know even weather woman kind of thing right. but um, that was kind of what got me going and then one day I was kind of I got to make a change got to make a change and in the mail came this pamphlet you know the CSN oh, yeah, the, uh, catalog, catalog. Right. yep yep and I opened it up and there was a, a voice class and I went that's it that's what I've been waiting for that's what I need to do that way I can hide would this be a voice class by our very own Betty Lugaris it would be <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Our, le our leader in chief. And like I said, since I have signed up for that class, I have done a little bit of everything. Um, as you saw earlier today, probably one of the more dangerous things I've done in a while, I had to avoid a hammer. <laughs> and so much for hiding behind um, the fourth wall oh, and, yeah. and doing well, radio work, right? Yeah. But Sometimes you have to be out in front of a camera, and yeah. this is one of those times. It is, it is. And, you know, I really enjoy pushing that envelope and trying new things. As a matter of fact, um, kind of my latest venture is working on voices yeah. with accents, trying yes. to sound not just like that Midwestern or that radio show talk host person, right. but, you know, maybe sound like I'm from the South or give, you know, give other things a try. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to put on a little voice, put on a completely different character. I know. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It so, sure so what is. what are the crazy things you've done recently? Uh, well, you know, that would, today was probably the craziest with that hammer. I don't know. Oh, that right. was kind of scary. I don't know how you felt. Um, it can get worse. <laughs> <laughs> it probably can. No, actually, I'm going to do the 48-hour film project again. Ah. Uh, one of our members, Costa, he invited me last year to step in, and you as well. That's we, right. we got a chance to talk about acting and, and being in front of the camera. Right. And he's doing it again. Oh, and well, good. This and year, it's falling, what, the last weekend of the month? Yes. I'm the 26th, 27th, like I believe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's the weekend before school starts. Yeah, he called yeah. me too. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to be joining us? Uh, I think so. Awesome. And I think Dana is going to be joining us, maybe doing some writing. All right. So, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. And uh, so, let's see. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Five years from now. Let me see. Uh, relaxing. Yeah, the Bahamas, feet up, waves going. No, no, probably not. <laughs> My kids will be in high school. I'll probably right. be going, oh. But yeah. Oh, so um, the kids go into high school and you go on spring break. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Hopefully doing a lot more with media guilds and, oh. and a little more with that acting and maybe actually getting paid uh, to do some work. <laughs> that would really be. You can get paid doing this? All right. You know, that's what I hear. Yeah. I'm not sure, but I've heard <laughs> that people get paid to do stuff like All this. Right. So yeah, that's probably my goal. Oh, yeah. There's actually quite a few famous uh, voiceover Voice artists who are paid. That's true. And actually, we've had some good people on our yeah. show before. Yes, we have. Rich Little was on our show at one point. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Well, that was a heck of a show. It was. And talk about voices. That man is phenomenal. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I still got a lot of work to do. And, and thanks to all the people that are working with me and helping train me, definitely. So, in five years, hopefully, I'll have a little money and I can take that vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah let's hope your dreams come true. Well, and thank you. Thanks thank for you. being on. Yeah. Teresa Graham, future star. 
All right, and coming up next, we have another comedy sketch. This one is named Weekend Plans. This is written by uh, one of our authors, uh, Rick Beinhammer, which happens to be me. And uh, starring in that, we have Isaac, Susan, Deanna, Terry, Alan, and myself. Hey, bro, I got my new bass boat part in the front, and I'm raring to go. A whole weekend at Grandpa's cabin, fishing, duck hunting. Where's Ray? Oh, he should be here any time now. He called and said he had to pick up our wives at the beauty salon. Oh, so that explains why it's so quiet and peaceful. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. If they're at the beauty salon, Ray could be there for hours. They went this morning. Ray called as they were leaving. He sounded kind of weird. Newsflash! Our little brother always was weird. I mean weirder than normal. Well, he is, along with our wives. Yeah. That'll do it to you right there. Uh, good point. I wouldn't want to wish that on any man. Oh, here they come. Guys, guys, it's disaster. Uh, why, why? It looks like the salon did a pretty good job. Didn't it's from not here. that. It's why they all went to the salon. What are you talking about? Hi, Hi boys. boys. Hey, did Ray tell you the great news? What great news? You know how you boys have been hinting about getting together like old times? Yes. No! Maybe. Well, there's a three-day weekend tomorrow, and we got this idea. Let me guess. You're going to let us have a boys' weekend outing together? Of course not. Don't be silly. Why not? Because we came up with an even better idea. Here it comes. We called everyone, and we arranged a, a family, family reunion. reunion. Surprise! Now the whole family can all get together. Bond, reminisce about old times. And make new memories to cherish forever. You shouldn't have. Oh, it was no trouble at all. No, you really shouldn't have. Oh, don't be so negative, Clay. It'll be fun. You have met our family. God help us. Where are they all going to stay? Well, we'll work something out when they get here. Oh, the humanity. My dad's bringing that big old monster motorhome of his. And we have all that camping gear and sleeping bags we hardly ever use. Oh, yeah, the HOA is going to love that. Boy, do you know you know the rules say that no RVs in well, front of the house? it's only one weekend. Who's going to notice? A huge converted bright red double-decker bus? You're right. No one's going to possibly notice that. You know, guys, I think it's a great idea. What? what? Have you lost your mind? Think about it. The family reunion doesn't have to be held here, does it, ladies? Well, of course not. Well, all we have to do is have everyone meet us at Grandpa's cabin. Brother Jay, that's one hell of a good idea. Wonderful! Beautiful, just beautiful! Okay, ladies, go call everyone real quick and get them in on the plan. Okay. Then yeah. start packing food and clothing. Okay. Right. The three of us will go ahead and grab the tents, sleeping bags, fishing poles, etc. Okay. All right, this is going to be the best weekend ever! Yay, let's yeah. go! Okay, guys, the girls are gone. Now, how are we going to survive this wild outdoor weekends without losing our minds. Simple. We let the grandparents and the great-grandparents spend quality time teaching the grandchildren all about the great outdoors, just like when we were kids. Yeah. Meanwhile, while they're fishing with the house apes, we'll hunt ducks. And when they're fishing the kids, all the other outdoor stuff, we go duck hunting. The wives can go on the nature walks and crap with the smaller kids, and they will, of course, happily take care of the other stuff. Genius. Pure genius. We get to do what we want to do in the first place and at the same time win brownie points with the wise by doing what they wanted. Yeah. Boys, let's go get packing. Yeah, all right. All right, we have another improvisation bit here now. We have Dana and Isaac, and they're going to be using the story cubes. Da da da. Rolling dice with little pictures on it to tell them what they have to come up with. Hey, Isaac, I think we're going on vacation. Let's find out where. Let's find out. How about that? 
What do we have here? I don't know. Let's dig in our box. Don't look. Just take a cue. Let's see what we got. Feel it right well, now. I like pirates, so let's go somewhere like the Caribbean. Yeah. I love it. The Caribbean got great music. Got my headphones oh. ready. We could jam. Got some, got some good <laughs> reggae going on. Calypso. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't make a wrong turn, though, because I'm really looking forward to that music. I know, because you don't want to go to Cocoa Beach. They have Cocoa Bikinis there, you know. Cocoa. Oh, I could do bikinis. Are there any nude beaches? Yeah, but you may want to oh. take some Dramamine. You may oh. get a little dizzy for what for the sure. sights that you may see. You sure there. I won't need my uh, spyglass to, to focus in on the I don't think you want to focus that stuff. much because there's some <laughs> ungodly exciting sights down there, let me tell you. Oh, I might have to wear my helmet then, huh? Yeah, you may want to bump your head on the coconut tree after the experience you make. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Does my helmet look good? No? It's a little special for you. Is it? Oh, well, I am special. Didn't you know that? You should fit right in down at the locals. I'm then. a special. But I didn't ride the little bus. No? No. What else do we have? Well, it looks like we have rain in the forecast. Oh, I love rain. Yeah? Yes. What do you do in the rain? What do I do in the rain? Oh, I had this one spectacular evening where I walked in the rain holding hands with my honey. Yeah? Yeah. I've never seen your honey. Who's your honey? Oh, my honey, Jesse. Jesse. He's lovely. Yes, he. He wow. looks like you. Really? He does. Oh. He's not quite so tall, though. Dark and lovely, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You like oh. dark chocolate, I see. I do. <laughs> but maybe he's a little more alien than you. Uh, I think you took a wrong turn on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, maybe I'm an amoeba then, and I'll just have to slink off to my little corner. Okay. Well, I think our boat is here, so... It, <gasps> yes! It may Fisher? take us... If, no, it's the boat to take us back to the mainland. No. Yeah. No. I think it's time to go. It's time to go? It's time to go. Oh. The music stopped playing. Okay. All right. Well, when there's no music, I can't move my body. You can't move my body? Let's go home. That's right. Gone to Rio. De Janeiro. Oh, yeah, I was just thinking about the Olympics they were talking about, you know, going on a trip and everything. But we're going to go in a different place right now. We're going to go where the fairies live. This is a script, uh, sketch written by uh, Betty Lagaris called Albert's Four Funny Fairies, starring Isaac, Teresa, Susan, D D Diana, and Dana and Dan Diana. Blah, 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 blah. Rented lips. All right, and let's go with it now. Okay. Once upon a time in another dimension, there were four funny fairies. There was the fairy queen and her three fairy friends. What did you say? Funny furry, furry, furry friends? I said funny fairy friends. Oh, oh that's better. better. As they were flitting around, having fun, waving their wands, and spreading sparkles here and there, a young man by the name of Albert, not looking where he was going, bumped into the small flock of fairies, oh, knocking them oh, apart. Oh, 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 of course, they were telling oh, the same by oh, hitting them on the head with their fairy oh, wings. Hey, oh, Albert oh, was so stunned, he went into shock. Oh dear, we stunned this human. You know what that means. No, what does it mean? Well, according to fairy law, we are responsible for his welfare. You mean we have to cook, clean, and support him? You mean like he's a little child? It does. Fairies, get ready. Wave your wands over his head, and he'll revive. Wake up. Wake up. What happened? Oh. Where am I? I feel like I've been in a coma. Oh, he's revived. Good. Albert, we were worried about you. We are all fairies, and I'm the fairy queen. And by our code, we are responsible for your welfare. How did you know my name? No, oh, my dear, we know a lot of things. People's names, birth dates, credit score, the usual. My credit score? Mm -hmm. My welfare? Mm -hmm. My credit isn't too good. We know. But I can take care of myself, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. No nanny wheelers like <gasps> you. Well, that's rude. Here we are, ready to watch over you, and you call us weirdos. Well, maybe he just has to know us better. Yes, and remember, you bumped into us first. Mm -hmm. Fairies, you are right. Introductions are in order. Mm -hmm. Albert, I am the fairy queen. Brilliant. So, you are the smart one. Uh, more like bright. Look, 
Why don't you relax and let us do what us fairies are supposed to do by fairy law. Let me introduce Twinkle. Delighted. Sparkle. My pleasure. And Dazzle. Oh, Shanti. So resigned to his fate, Albert just relaxed and let the fairies take over. Mm -hmm. Here's your steak, just the way you like it. Gee, thanks. Albert, I'll get your house cleaned up and maybe paint the kitchen. Gee, thanks. And I just brought you your new wardrobe, oh, coordinated needed by top designers. Mm. Gee, thanks. Albert, are you happy now? Hmm. Hmm. All I can say, Fairy Queen Brilliant, is... Gee, thanks. After a month of looking over Albert, the fairies were getting bored and annoyed. <sighs> I'm tired of hearing his extensive vocabulary. Gee, thanks. Mm, and I'm tired of cleaning up after him. I'd rather fly in a dust storm. And I'm sick of picking out designer clothes that don't fit. He's gained weight. Mm -hmm. Well, there's got to be a loophole in the fairy law somewhere. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, right here. Where? It what? says if a human that is placed under protection of fairies uh -huh. does not appreciate yes. any of their protection, well, they can... Resign? resign. Exactly! Yay! <laughs> oh. So where is Albert now? Excuse me, sir. Can you spare 25 cents for the bus so I can get to the Salvation Army Soup Kitchen? Um... So be careful with the fairies, folks. And now we have our, mo our my moment to shine with our guru of health, Isaac Bailey. Hello, folks. My name is Isaac Bailey, Jr. I am a health professional, have been for the past 19 years now, all because I love people and I have a passion for fitness and health and well-being. I'm here today to talk to you the, about the benefits of exercising to prolong your health. It has many benefits. Uh, one major benefit from exercising is simply just to feel good. And you're never too young or too old to participate to get the body moving. And in this country, and I've traveled, in this country we have some of the most, most of our people love to sit on the couch and relax. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but we do need to get the body moving, okay? Now, some of the benefits of exercising will also strengthen your muscles, your joints, your tendons, your ligaments, and add some years and some time onto your life, and you just simply feel good. And also, de-stress. And not, not, not to mention, if you like to eat, it will also help you maintain your weight, okay? So, since we're in a gym, I like to talk about in uh, some exercises and show you guys and, and ladies out there of course some of the things that you should do and should not do when you exercise and all the more reason why you should always seek professional help for advice so that you minimize your injuries in doing these exercises so that you can go back to the gym and enjoy yourself so let's see what we have in our gym today now here we see we have two ladies exercising. I don't know what this lady is doing, but let's peek in and see what she's doing here. What are you working? Well, it seems like she got a little legs, little neck, little back, and she got a flight plan implemented. She got a little chicken wing going on. What are you, what, what are you doing working on today? Oh, uh, this here and that there and just everywhere. Oh, so how do you do your bicep curls? Uh, bicep, that's like this, right? Oh, so you're just stretching out? Yeah, I'm stretching my biceps. Okay, uh, folks, uh, this is all the more reason why you should seek professional help because we clearly don't know what this little one is doing. <laughs> so let's move on because I see another member in the gym who's actually looked like she knows what's going on. Hello, miss. What are you working on today? Hi. Well, I'm working on my biceps. Oh, ah, look yeah. like you know what you're doing. So may I ask, when did you learn that move? Oh, well, you know, I had to get myself a personal trainer. That's really the best way to go because then you learn the correct form and how to do it and what's best for your body. Smart training, smart training. Well, well, who, who, who helped you open this gym? Uh, you did. <laughs> See that? 
<laughs> well, my name is Isaac. Fish, nice to meet you. What's your name? Uh, Terry. Terry? Nice Terry, to meet you. How about I buy you a protein drink? I would love it. That would be great. Cool. That's good. Okay. Let's take our friend here. We can teach her the ropes. Ah, sounds good. Come on. Cool. Let's go. Uh-huh. All right. Well, that's our show for today. That's uh, Media Guilds International's Vegas voice actors on camera. And uh, we'd like to thank uh, Alan Burke, Isaac Bailey, Betty Lou Garris, our leader, Dana Wall Oakley, Diana McLean, Susan Beinhammer, Terry Graham, and I'm Rick Beinhammer. And our board operator and cameraman is John Stiles. <laughs> thank you for seeing our show and come back and see us every week, every two weeks on or whenever you want to on <laughs> this YouTube channel. Okay.